Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today we're going to discuss Anadrol and is Anadrol dangerous? So obviously no steroid is safe technically but um, I just wanted to do an in-depth video on Anadrol, Anapolone or Oxymethylone. Um, those are just names, different names given to it. Um, so it's a 17-alpha alkylated compound which most oral steroids are, and it's a DHT derivative, just like Anavar, uh, Masteron, things like that. So the st study I'll be referring to is this, I'll link it uh, below, but it's a double-blind randomized placebo control trial. Um, this, well, <laughs> in response to my previous video on the anabolic doc, he said there are no RCTs, so he can't make a conclusion. Well, here's one. RCT being randomized control trial. Anyway, um, so in the study, Anadrol was given to patients who had um, wasting uh, secondary to HIV and AIDS, um, and they gave it to them over a period of 16 weeks. There were two groups. Uh, one was given uh, 50 milligrams of Anadrol twice a day, and the other group was given 150 uh, well, uh, 50 milligrams three times a day, which is 150 in total. So, um, again, the study was over 16 weeks, which is quite a long period for an oral steroid, but let's just see the results. Um, just to mention, there were confounding variables, um, especially in the, um, the group receiving 150 milligrams of anadrol. They, they had previous hepatitis, a previous history of hepatitis, and uh, they had serological evidence proving that they had previous episodes, and that was 60% of the patients. So that's quite a massive confounding variable. So in terms of the weight gain, um, it, they only started noticing weight gain at two weeks. Um, after therapy started and the rate at which weight gain was being achieved was rapid up until the fourth week and then whilst it was still high it uh, the rate didn't change um, until well it didn't change thereafter and their weight actually seemed to have reached its peak in week eight so again this suggests that it should be ran between four and eight weeks. Eight weeks is where you'd reach your peak. However, four weeks is where you'd, after that, you'd stop expecting rapid weight gains. Um, so the total weight gain in the 100 milligram group was three kilograms and it was 3.5 in the 150 group. And comparing this to the original weight, it was 5.5, 4.5% total increase of the, it, it, their original body mass in the 50 milligram group and 5.3 in the, I mean, in the uh, uh, 4.5 in the 100 milligram group and 5.3 in the 150 milligram group. But in fact, there was more lean uh, mass gain, apparently uh, 2.9, which is pretty much most of the three kilograms was observed in the 100 milligram groups whilst the 150 group gained 1.8 of that 3.5. However, there was a confounding variable again and that was um, there were issues with the 150 milligram group. Um, they didn't specify what the issues were exactly, but anyway, as we can see the two doses, there weren't that much of a difference. So dosage suggestion, if you were to use it or not suggesting you do, 100 milligrams would be safer because um, it's no different to 150. Unfortunately, no study really looked at 50 milligrams. But anyway, so let's look at the side effects. Obviously, the most spoken about side effect for anadrol would be its liver toxicity. Um, and this was actually quite high. I'll display it on the screen. Um, so there was liver associated toxicity in 43% of the 150 milligram group and 25% of the um, of the 100 milligram group and the placebo uh, uh, group did also experience 
a liver toxicity, and this was defined as the AST, uh, ALT, and gamma uh, G or GGTs being more than five times the baseline. And so it became clear that were, there was a dose-dependent effect. However, again, there was that confounding variable of them having hepatitis, so they're at risk of drug-induced liver injury. Um, and um, the placebo even had liver toxicity, which is interesting, but actually not so, because you could get uh, in patients, especially HIV patients who were wasting with the sudden increase in calories and stuff that can result in uh, liver overworking resulting in these increases in enzymes. However, the more important fact is they were all on antiretroviral therapy because they have HIV and AIDS. And the study was done in 2003. And if I look back, uh, nevirapine was used quite commonly back then, but I could be wrong. And nevirapine is known to be hepatotoxic. So combining two hepatotoxic agents is obviously not great. <laughs> Furthermore, a, a few of them had opportunistic infections. This is when, uh, since their CD4 count or immune cells are low, they're at risk of getting these infections by bugs that take advantage of their low immunity. So they were treated with fluconazole, which is also hepatotoxic. So again, there are so many confounding variables, but this still does prove a dose-dependent response in terms of hepatotoxicity. But other studies have proved it is, whilst it can be hepatotoxic, they were they failed to demonstrate it, but I'll get on to that. So um, when was this hepatotoxicity experience? Usually around week four is when it was noticed. And on cessation of the drug, they uh, everything reversed back to normal. Um, other side effects noticed, there were no increases in blood pressure, which is interesting considering Anadrol is the kills your blood pressure, or it is stated on forums, um, but we'll get into that again. Um, and there were women included in the trial, and only one experienced uh, an androgenic side effect, which was clitoral enlargement none experienced situism or any like body hair growth or masculinization. But again, since they have HIV AIDS and AIDS, um, women and men already have low an circulating androgen levels, which means by addition of something that could be androgenic, you're just correcting the, or you're replacing the androgen. So they're not particularly so now they just have normal androgenicity, whereas before they had no androgenicity. If you understand, if you get what I'm saying. Um, so let's look at other markers: renal function not impaired, uh, which is also surprising because I'm sure they were using tenofovir, or maybe they weren't back then, which uh, is a uh, antiretroviral therapy. This is used to treat AIDS and HIV. Um, and that is renal toxic. Um, there were no changes in cholesterol, again surprising since 17 alpha alkylated uh, oral steroids are known to ruin lipid profiles. Um, uh, anyway, there's no elevation in PSA in the men, and of course significant decline in testosterone, which was also dose dependent, and in all groups LH and FSH were decreased meaning there was shutdown, which is not surprised, uh, surprising. Um, other things noticed, uh, most had an increased appetite and 61% uh, in, in, in noticed an improved well-being. Well, this isn't spoken about. I have heard of it a few times of people saying whilst on Anadrol, they feel better. I'm not entirely sure of the mechanism behind this, however. Um, so let's look at another um, trial. This one isn't as good since it's not randomized. This is more of a, prospe a prospective case control um, open label trial. So in one group they had um, 150 milligrams of anadrol given to one group and the other had 100 plus uh, keto 
uh, keto tiffin, or I, I always mess up how to, this is said, but this is actually used by bodybuilders in order to, in combination with clenbuterol. Um, but it's also, it um, decreases uh, tumor necrosis factor, which is also interesting. Um, and t uh, tumor necrosis factor is increased in wasting conditions. So that's why, that was the logic behind using it. So this was actually done over 30 weeks, which is a long time to use, let's say, 150 milligrams of oxymethylone or anadrol. Um, but if we look at the results here, um, the peak weight was experienced at around 19 to 20 weeks specifically. Um, however, if we look at when they hit their peak weight relative to their weight after 12 weeks, the rate of weight gain is very slow. So it seemed that, well, if we took this into perspective, most of the weight gain uh, happens before or the rapid weight gain occurs before the 12 weeks, which was shown in the other trial. Um, and again, the other trial was only 16 weeks, so perhaps uh, that's why they didn't pick up this other peak weight, which was experienced at 19 to 20 weeks. But again, they gained quite a bit. And just to mention, these patients were wasted, which means they have low muscle mass, so obviously they're going to gain size, which makes it important to have a placebo and they still significant they gain significantly more than placebo since the p-value was compared to placebo um so uh, in terms of side effects all of the patients tolerated the drug in this trial for 30 weeks they tolerated it um none of the patients had these confounding uh variables such as the uh, uh, previous hepatitis and things which are common in patients who are immunosuppressed um there was no peripheral edema or hypertension or high blood pressure again um no signs of virilization in the women again uh proving it might not be very androgenic um there were no um, significant changes in the blood counts, so there was no erythropoietic uh, or increase in erythrocytosis, that kind of stuff. And renal and liver function tests were normal, which is surprising since anadrol is one of the more, or is stated to be quite hepatotoxic. And I'm not saying it isn't, and I think it should be treated as if it is. However, studies, uh, the literature is mixed. Um, again, uh, the study didn't look at LH, FSH, or TESS, but we can assume they were suppressed. So in this literature review, which is obvious, uh, I'm going by grades of evidence here. So this was a literature review um, that just took a whole bunch of studies and summarized them. So it was, it has been used to treat aplastic anemia because it does stimulate the bone marrow and makes it more hypercellular, which means it could increase blood count, red blood cell count. Um, and again, it has been shown to increase urinary erythropoietin levels, which means it in some pe individuals who are prone to getting high hematocrit levels, this could be an issue. Um, there are issue. There was one study mo uh, uh, mentioning that it impaired glucose tolerance, um, so it causes a decrease in insulin sensitivity, which is interesting to note. There was more nitrogen retention than test uh, when compared to testosterone, um, but it also mentioned multiple studies which, in children, it was used at quite a high dose to promote growth, and in other studies. Um, they looked at hepatotoxicity and there was minimal hepatotoxicity with oxymethylone. So again, the literature is really confusing. Um, so uh, again, uh, uh, what's interesting to note is anadrol actually isn't estrogenic, not in the typical sense. And um, we don't really know the mechanism behind this. Um, but I'll state it just now because I'm going to discuss hypertension and high blood pressure with uh, anadrol. So again, none of these mentioned that of these studies mentioned that the patients had high blood pressure as a side effect, which is interesting because it's always spoken about on the forums. Um, 
So, um, why uh, is this the case? Well, I, I'm unsure, but I came up with a possible hypothesis, and that's the problem that with for forums, most of the people there aren't just taking Anadrol only, and it's usually used in combination with at least testosterone and Anadrol. So I'm not saying the testosterone is a problem, I think it's the combination that is the issue. And as I mentioned, whilst Anadrol isn't estrogenic, it does seem to upregulate estrogen receptors, so and make, not upregulate, make them more sensitive to estrogen. So if you use it in, comp uh, in the combination with something that is estrogenic like testosterone at a high dose, then the estrogen becomes more of an issue. Uh, then had sorry about that. There's a hardy dose, um, so it becomes more of an issue. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, but if you can, if you pair it with a compound that is highly estrogenic and you manage to control the estrogen, then the high blood pressure shouldn't be an issue because I would postulate that Anadrol causes this high blood pressure, or it doesn't, it just, the combination of something that's estrogenic plus something that's regulating these um, estrogen receptors results in this high blood pressure because estrogen causes water retention and things like that, which do, do increase your blood pressure. And perhaps these individuals on the forum are purely getting are not getting Anadrol and getting a cheaper D-Ball, which I wouldn't be surprised if, happened, uh, if that happened, but I have seen an individual, um, just one, who's taken Anadrol and I checked their blood pressure, and the combination with, they were using, um, I think around 650 Sustanon, um, and um, I, uh, estrogen was in range and their blood pressure was normal, so uh, that's just an anecdotal experience. So in summary, is it dangerous? Obviously more so than if you didn't take anything. Um, but um, I would argue and say it's the leaner, more drier D-ball with um, a great ability to retain nitrogen. Um, so how much of it should you take? Well, you shouldn't take any, but if you were, 100 milligrams seems to be effective. 100 milligrams daily, as more than that comes with more side effects and not as much weight, or oh, uh, not um, a significant amount of weight gain to wa uh, warrant the extra risk. Um, how long should you take it? From the study, it would suggest that between we four weeks and eight weeks would be the optimal duration. Um, although the studies have been longer and suggest three to six months, um, I, I don't think you should risk that. And it seems the gains, or the muscle gains after week eight at least, seem to just slow down to a point where it's quite minimal. Um, it, is it hepatotoxic? Um, all orals are, and I think it should be treated as such, however the literature is mixed and there are too many confounding variables in the RCT, but we can say there's a dose-dependent response in hepatotoxicity and um, that that's why the duration should be kept shorter if possible. Blood pressure, is that a problem? It's not demonstrated in the literature. However, I would always advise checking your blood pressure and keeping it in range on cycle, and this means keeping your estrogen in check, especially when using Anadrol. Um, is it androgenic? Well, it doesn't appear to be so, and it's possibly safe in women to run, just like Anavar is. Um, but I'm not suggesting you use it, obviously, but I'm just saying it could be used in women with few androgenic side effects. Um, it does skew your lipids slightly and it will shut you down and it also will raise your red blood cell count. Um, and there's this possibility of glucose intolerance. So that's everything you need to know about Anadrol. Um, and uh, let me know what you think, if you've used it, your experiences down in the comments below. I'd be curious. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.